This is a look at the Panasonic 20mm f17 pancake lens. It has been around since September 2009 and mine was bought with a Panasonic GF1 camera body, the first M43 camera I ever bought. Anyone who has earned a living as a news photographer will know that going out without a camera that can produce saleable results under any conditions is like a cowboy going out without his colt. In my news photographer days, I'd use a Leica M2 with a 35mm lens as my always with me camera and lens combination. The GF1 with this lens was, in my mind, the digital equivalent. I sold the GF1 long ago and I've bought and sold many M43 cameras, bodies and lenses since. What I've never sold is the 20mm. I never reviewed it before because it is so familiar that I hardly knew I had it. Yet it is one of my most used lenses, this little lens is family now. So let's take a look. The first and most obvious thing about this lens is that it is tiny. Compared to the 25mm f1.4 Panasonic, it is half the size, half the weight and roughly half the price. It is not half the speed though, being just a half a stop slower. It weighs in at 100 grams, that is less than 4 ounces, and sticks out from the camera body by about an inch or 25mm. It really is tiny for such a lens. It is made from grey plastic, though half of the body width is taken up by the rubberized focusing ring. The lens feels solid in spite of its light weight. The front glass moves a tiny amount, about 3mm as you focus, but doesn't turn, so if you fit a polarizing filter it won't change the angle of polarization. The focusing ring doesn't have any stops at closest or infinity focus, but will revolve continuously. There's a menu option on most M43 cameras to show a focusing scale on screen if you need confirmation of the closest 20cm or infinity focus position. I don't use manual focus much with a lens like this, but when I do I find the action a little, I don't know, scratchy compared to the silky smoothness of the 12 35 zoom, say. No problem as such with its action, it's just not enjoyable to use. What is a bit of a nuisance is that it doesn't have image stabilisation. Maybe the lens is too small to fit it in, but the 14 42 Vario X compact zoom has it, so it would look to be technically possible. The 20mm focal length falls between the traditional full frame 35 or 50mm angles of view, being 40mm in full frame speak. The Micro Four Thirds equivalents of 17mm wide and 25mm normal are well catered for. This lens at 20mm is a bit of an oddity, but if you don't compare and approach it for what it is, it is rather a useful focal length. As a general purpose lens I prefer it to 25mm. Do I prefer it to 17mm? No I don't. Now for the performance. This is a very sharp lens. I'm happy to use it wide open. Even at f1.7 it is crisp in the center. At 2.8 it is crisp edge to edge and by f4 it is tack sharp right across the frame. If you're doing landscape or architecture, use it at f4 or 5.6 with complete confidence. Purple fringing and distortion are taken care of in software, but even without are not present to any noticeable degree. Overall, stop down to f2, this lens will be beyond criticism for most photographers. At f2.8 to f5.6 it is an outstanding piece of glass by any standards. It doesn't really need a lens hood, but if you include a very bright light source in the frame you'll need to take care, as you would with any lens. If you do want a lens hood for that old Leica look, these stylish little items are dirt cheap on eBay. Now to the focusing speed. The latest M43 lenses feel to me as if they are focusing instantaneously in most light conditions. The 20mm doesn't feel that way. It isn't slow as such, but it can take a bit longer to lock on than the latest lenses and from point to point in low light the difference is noticeable. The Panasonic 12-35mm zoom is one of the fastest focusing of the new lenses. Here it is in action. And here is the 20mm in action on the same subject. Here is the 12 to 35 mm in low light. And 
and here is the 20 millimeter in low light. So, no two ways about it, focusing performance is not the strong point of this lens. It's not bad as such, and in day-to-day -day use is perfectly acceptable. If your favourite subject is your children chasing the new puppy up and down the garden, there are better choices. But if your favourite subject is your children chasing your pet Panamanian night monkey up and down its tree, forget it. The 20mm lens needs assessing on its own merits, not by comparison with lenses it is not. It is tiny, it is fast and it is reasonably priced. A lens of this optical quality and this size is the heart of why many people buy into Micro Four Thirds equipment. Put it on a Panasonic GF or GX or as I do an Olympus EPL5 and you have a pocketable camera, albeit a large pocket, with superb quality. Actually on the Olympus with its OMD sensor, quality is amazing rather than merely superb. Unfortunately, as in Star Wars, there is a dark side. Focus speed and lock is not up to standards we have come to expect from the latest M43 lenses. And it lacks in-lens stabilisation. If you're an Olympus user, lens stabilisation is not such an issue of course because you have it in the camera body. In the end, this veteran, by M43 standards, 20mm Panasonic, still offers a unique blend of compactness, light gathering power, image quality and price. If Panasonic kept the price point, updated the autofocus and added stabilisation, this lens would be a must-have. As it is, it fills the same slot in a camera bag that a little black dress does in a woman's wardrobe. When you're going out but not sure where you'll end up, choose this. Rarely perfect, but not often actually wrong. Thanks for watching.